Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Uh, this is Rav Shmuel ben Yehoshua, Rashbi in the house with um, uh, this week's 10-minute Torah. This week's 10-minute Torah is the infamous Korach. Yes, Korach. And uh, first, you know, I, I, I want to say that, you know, we had this uh, security seminar uh, Thursday night. Saw some people I don't usually get to see. And, you know, it was great seeing you folks, uh, Wendy and Allison and a few other people um, and it was it was just really and, and the barrages you're back in town glad to see that I, I don't have your email so I don't know that you'll be getting this but it was great seeing some of you folks and and, and, and you know B'nai Chaim is really kind of at this point the centerpiece of our Jewish community it is the only standing synagogue in like 40 in a 40 mile radius folks you know this is it um, and I know that there's other congregations out there, and that's great, you know, different strokes for different folks. You kind of need that. But uh, at the same time, it's, it's important, I think, you know, as a rabbi, maybe, you know, call me biased or whatever. But we need to have a structure that's dedicated to Judaism. We need to have a structure where people can go and know that this is your opportunity to express your culture and your heritage of, 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 a, of a culture that goes back 3,300 years, you know. So we're asking for your support. You know, please come. Glad to see you. Show up for a Friday night service, Saturday morning. Just had some people, you know, show up for a Saturday morning service. They couldn't make it Friday night. They had a yard site. They had a Weisblatt. It's great seeing you there. Um, I, maybe it's not something you want to do every week. You know, okay. I mean, I like it, but that's just me. But, uh, you, you know, show up every now and then. It's interesting. Right? And we make it, we make it enjoyable, we make it inspirational, and you come out feeling good like you're ready to handle the week. Okay, so back to Korach. Last week, we had the incident with the spies. And they came back, and they spun the truth. It was probably the first recorded incident of fake news or whatever. But, uh, you know, God's, God pronounced, you know, you're going to stay out here in the, in the wilderness until your generation dies off. You're not equipped, you know, emotionally or rationally to go take the land. It's just not going to happen. So you need to stay out here. You need to die off. And the next generation, that's Hardy, that grew up in the desert, you know, that had to face the elements. You know, they're going to be more suited uh, to establishing our covenant there. So that's pretty much what happened. And now... We have grumbling. Now, not all the sages agree that, you know, it's a chronological procession. Some people say that the incident with the spies happened a while ago and then this happened. You know, but for me as a rabbi looking at this and studying it, it, it does make sense. The flow of the Torah makes sense. And although it's not always in chronological order, usually it is. And unless you're given reason to assume that it's not or to analyze the fact that this that that the time is different between two portions or two chapters, then you just take it for granted that the flow is is the natural order of time. And it would make sense that after the Israelites got the news that, you know, we, we came out of Egypt, you know, for this just to die in the wilderness. You know, what's the point that they would be grumbling? Korah was a member of Moses' clan. He was like a cousin. He was a Levite. And he started, he took advantage of the fact that people were upset to try and put himself in power. He was what we call a demagogue. He comes to Moses and he tried to discredit him. It wasn't enough that, uh, you know, the people were upset that this pronouncement had been made. But now he's going to really try to discredit Moses and use their uh, grumbling, use their, their uh, um, fact that they're upset to try and take control. So he looks at Moses and he, in front of the community, he says to him, all right, so if I have a garment made of techelet, you know, that material that's supposed to just go on the tzitzit, that be that one blue thread that goes inside the tzitzit. And as an aside, we don't do that anymore because we don't know where the ink comes from. It was kind of lost in antiquity. So we don't have the tzitzit, the tzitzit. although some people do have tzitzit with a blue thread. It's not real tzitzit, it's just kind of a representation, you know. Does it make it unkosher? I don't know, probably not, but whatever. So anyway, Korach is saying, well, if I have a garment made completely of Tehillah, do I still need to put the, the single blue thread on there? And Moses says, yes. 
because that's the commandment. You will do the tzitzit and you will put a blue thread of tekelet in between it. And Korach is like, well, you know, a whole garment of tekelet isn't enough for Moses. You know, then he says, then he talks about how, um, oh, if you have a home that's full of books of the Torah, why do you need a mezuzah on the, on the lintel? And Moses says, because that's the commandment. We put a mezuzah on the, on the lintel of the doorpost as we're going in. And Korach is saying, but I have all these books with Torah passages and what we need that for. So he's trying to discredit him. And he's trying to make it look like it's Moses' decrees, not Hashem's. And that way discredit Moses. So, so this is what he's trying to do. Then he talks about a woman who's barely subsisting and she goes out and and she has this uh, she has this farm and then Moses shows up and says oh we need a tithe for the first year we need a tithe for the second year a tenth we need a tenth for the next year also you got to leave that ele gleanings that drop off the tree for the poor you know the poor woman just can't make a living so she sells the farm and buys some sheep and then Aaron shows up and says I want the first one and this that and the other thing so he's trying to make it look like these are Moses's law in the Torah and they don't make sense and they're there to uh, restrict people so so what do they do? They get the fire pans out and God says, okay, you know, the Levites, uh, who I, the Kohans who I appointed, who I anointed, will have, you know, I will accept their incense. And, and by the way, the whole idea of the incense, incense was very sacred. I mean, that was, that was the main offering. Sure, you had your sacrifices and everything, but it was the incense that was a reach nechoch, a sweet savor unto the Lord, that was really big. And what happens? You know, Korach is defeated, the ground opens up, and it swallows him and the 250 people that followed him, and, you know, that was the end of that. Now, just kind of as a couple of asides from this, right, the psalm of the day for Monday is a psalm that the sons of Korach had written. The sons of Korach saw what happened. They were ashamed that their father did something like that, and, and, and they dedicated themselves to being good Levites, get, being good ministers, and they composed psalms. And I believe the psalm for Monday is Psalm 48, and it's either 45 to 50, or maybe it's the whole 40s that are ascribed to Korah, to the sons of Korah. This is you know their contribution to the book of Tehillim, to the book of Psalms. So it's interesting because when we talk uh, about God's 13 attributes, you know, visiting... Um, disgrace onto the third or fourth generation you know is that just an automatic given and obviously it's not the reason it means and this is why you have to kind of look between the lines of the Torah you know you look at it and it says okay the apple doesn't fall far from the tree typically kids adopt from their parents right you know people say how does prejudice happen why do people not like you know foreigners because the parents are just go on and on the kids hear it they love their parents and they think ah you know listen to my dad in fact there was a commercial on years ago where uh, this man is up is is, is uh, looking into the camera and he's going you know these people are coming from overseas and they're destroying our country and this that and the other. and then as he's talking it fades to a little kid and the kid's saying the same thing and he thinks goes yeah that's true just ask my dad see so you know visiting retribution onto the third or fourth generation that's why it's because of the influence not because God's decreeing something is because that's just what happens but these people these sons of Korach had the seichel, they had the wisdom to know that this wasn't right and we're ashamed really of what our father did so we're going to try and make it up and they were good Levites see so you can make things up now interestingly enough as this was going on Dathan and Abiram were also creating a little bit of a grumble as well now Korach of course was from the tribe of Levi and Dathan and Abiram were from the tribe of Reuben and if you look at the arrangement of the tribes and the Levites around the Mishkan, you know, it, the Levites and the Reubens were right there. So, you know, it's, you know, woe is to he that breaks the law and woe to his neighbor because, you know, you get that influence. You know, it's like gossip. Don't get me started on gossip. I've been told that I talk too much about gossip, but I'll tell you, you know, sometimes you can't talk enough about gossip, but that's what happens. It's grumbling. You know, you get these people. Uh, who start talking and then they pass it to another people who's next to them, the Reubenites, you know, and they're all pissed off because, you know, they were the firstborn and that much, that that privilege was taken away from them and given to the Levites. So you got all this discontent and these people are just, you know, moving on it. They're just going with it. You know? And as we saw, the rebellions were put down in the desert. You would, now you, you, you kind of understand the grumbling. 
you know, but you know, you got to take responsibility for what you do. I mean, there's so many lessons in here. You know, you see how Moses has gone out, how he's gone to bat for people. Aaron, the Midrash says that Aaron would go around and he'd find two people that were fighting. He'd go to one person and say, hey, such and such is real upset that you're fighting. Then he'd go to the other person and say, hey, such and such is upset that you're fighting. And he'd bring them together, you know. So it's about trust. It's about gossip. And it's about the fact that, that you know what, you just got to watch your behavior, I guess. You know, so many things. So it's the summer. I know that a lot of people have things to do. We had a lot of people come Thursday, not so much on Friday or Saturday. Uh, this is 4th of July. Happy 4th of July to everybody. Uh, this will probably go out before that, so I hope you enjoy. And in the meantime, uh, look forward to seeing you at services. Thank you again for your participation. And once again, Shabbat Shalom.